I can't. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Lunch and Learn. You did. We are uh, going to be uh, having Rick Slater, who is our subject matter expert for NASA Primes, uh, will be presenting today. This is the beginning of the engagement with the clients where we can show you how he's going to be working with the primes from your information. Uh, he also has uh, a gentleman who is a small business person that has been successful working with uh, Rick and NASA primes. Our objective is to be able to give you specific information where you can go and look at the possibility of engaging the NASA primes. Uh, all the information we're going to show you today will be on our website. We are working uh, with our folks within the Kansas SBDC to be able to provide what we're gonna call our tech commercialization toolbox to where everything you see uh, today will be at your fingertips where you can get to it. Uh, that way you don't have to have an email to get there. Uh, we will be emailing you the survey uh, as uh, we launch this, but we're going to be linking it in such a way that you'll be able to get to all this information. Um, we, are, we have with us today, uh, some are economic development, some are Department of Commerce, uh, and some of you may be from uh, business, and then our e ecosystem partners, uh, SBDC folks from different states. Our objective is that this, uh, this coming matchmaking event will be the first of an ongoing program. Uh, we do not anticipate this to be just a one-time conference. Wish it goes well, and if it doesn't, so forth and so forth. If this is an ongoing program, for those of you that have been part of our Encountering Innovation, it will be a lot like Encountering Innovation. Uh, where it is a, an intentional invitation to the primes, which is what Rick, uh, Rick's job is, is because of his reputation, he'll be able to bring those in. And then our job is to be able to help you understand how to engage the primes in a specific way that they want. Uh, if you've attended an SBA matchmaking or some other uh, event in the past, most of the matchmaking I have seen is really a first come first serve to hurry up and sign up for certain people. That is not the way this one's going to work. Uh, this one is different. So as Rick explains that in a few minutes, hopefully uh, it'll make sense to you and then you can move forward. So uh, first thing I wanna do is, uh, Vicki, if you're taking care of all the, the back office stuff, I won't pay attention to it. I want to be able to share as okay, uh, what screen are you seeing? Somebody talk to me. This is the SBDC. Okay, uh, sometimes uh, this is one of those times where we're recording this and talking to you live, and that little green uh, box does not show up. So, this will be interesting to see what all you see. Okay, so this is basically uh, our, our point with this is. We want you to know that anytime you're talking to another client uh, or ecosystem person, whoever it is, and you're talking about the NASA Prime program, uh, and you go, oh, I don't have any documents with me. I wish I could show you. You can. You'll be able to go to kansasbdc.net, and all, it, that's where we're at, and you just scroll down and you see tech commercialization. You click on it, you're on our tech commercialization page. We are, uh, our fine folks at Pit, uh, Pittsburgh State with the SBDC are doing a great job of supporting us. Uh, when you land here, what we wanna be able to do is give you the tools you need at your fingertips. So if you're a client and you get here and you wish for something, write me or Vicki and tell us what you wish you could see. If you're a tech coach or a business advisor and you wish you could see something, write us and tell us. That's what this is. This is to be your tech commercialization toolbox. Uh, Bill, uh, our, biz, our uh, SBIR and grants ad, uh, advisor is uh, working to where our, in our SBIR, STTR grants page that will be able to give you more and more information 
easy, easily. What we don't want to do is throw a encyclopedia of information where you have to spend hours trying to navigate. That's not the intention. Uh, for instance, our tech, we now have tech uh, launch and learn. On this page, we'll be able to post our, our previous lunch, uh, lunch and learns to where you can look at those and you see what's coming. Um, we told you before, one of the most important pages should be your tech commercialization. Uh, when you go there, for those that weren't here last week, uh, we work with the Goldsmith model. It's a very simple uh, or simplified uh, form of looking through the steps to commercialization. Any business advisor across the country should be able to talk with any tech person in, in the investigation phase and really even the feasibility phase. They may not know all the, the parts in the technical, uh, if that's the case, and that's what Bill is for, to engage, but our uh, business advisor should be able to understand and talk with any of you with the market analysis, the production strategy analysis, because uh, that's a business track and that's a market track. And so most of our tech clients tend to be very good going down the tech track, but they tend to leave the marketing, whether it's the marketing analysis or the feasibility, they tend to leave that behind. Uh, and that's what we're here for, all of us, to help you. But this is a page that you should feel comfortable, get comfortable with. Understand there, we will have buttons, but you can go to any one of these. See my cursor changes because there is a deep dive. The ne Nebraska SBDC has done a very good job of doing a deep dive. So whichever step you think you're at, you should be able to click on that. And then you go to the uh, Nebraska page and they blow up all that information on just that one step. Uh, very good information for you, very detailed. So I'm, I'm wanting to remind you to where for our tech coaches or our, uh, you as a business that you can go through that. We will have in here, we will have the deep dive on NASA. So just one, the NASA primes, we'll, we'll, we don't have it on here yet, but just helping you to get comfortable knowing that when you get to the tech commercialization page, that information should be there. If there's something you're not seeing, like I said, give us, a, give us an email and tell us what you're looking for where we can put that up. Uh, our general commercialization lunch, a lunch and learn that has been going on with Lori Piper. I think she spoke earlier while we were in the back room uh, getting ready today. Uh, she's, uh, her and Carl are doing a great job of helping us in the general commercialization and some other deep dives to, to assist our clients. So we're uh, glad to have it where we can, you can come to the tech commercialization page and then from that, you can go to the Bright Center. So if you forget how to get there, all you got to do is go to Tech Commercialization and you'll be able to click on it and you'll be able to go over there. So hopefully very simple or simplified where you've got one tool chest to be able to get to things. Uh, Laurie, I see you've uh, uh, unmuted. Did you want to say something right quick? Oh, I, Are you talking uh, Lori Piper or Lori Moncrief? Lori, was, Lori Piper. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm still mute. Thanks, Sam. Okay. I guess she said, I guess that was a no. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, with that in mind, I, 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 we're, we're wanting to continue to give you the idea that we're trying to simplify where you've got a tool chest to be able to work in your commercialization, whether you're a business advisor, uh, a client, ecosystem, uh, Department of Commerce, whoever you are, we want you to be able to feel comfortable that this is your website for that commercialization opportunity. So we're inviting you to speak up, let us know what you wish for, and then let us, we want to keep it simple. But as I see this much like the who moved my cheese. I run down one hallway, I go left or right, pretty simple. That's what we're working towards. Um, with that in mind, uh, I do want to remind you that uh, our objective with this program with NASA Primes will be 
the last two weeks in July or the first two weeks in August. Rick is working with the primes to see that we can get the best representation with the primes where we can nail down a specific time. We're intending it to be three days in one of those weeks. So if you want to just go ahead and pencil that in where you know what time frame we're talking about and hopefully in the next week or so, uh, or uh, no longer than two, we'll be able to give you a specific time frame as to what, uh, where, when we'll have that available. The Lunch and Learn today is being recorded, so where you can see this again, and it, as we move forward and you get specific information to assist you in the capabilities and the things that we're doing to get you ready for the uh, Prime's uh, matchmaking event, if you miss something, come here and you should be able to see that information where you can look at it again. Okay. With that in mind, I hope I'll, hopefully I've covered everything we need to. I'd like to turn it over to Rick uh, and let him, uh, those, hopefully everyone knows Rick. Rick is our, uh, the subject matter expert. He was with uh, NASA Johnson Space Center and retired in December and has been doing a great job to get this ready. Rick, I'll turn it over to you and slip, uh, flip the slide deck over for you. Okay, well, thank you, Alan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're, we've got two things I, I'd like to cover uh, this afternoon. Uh, one is to talk about how we want to put together the matchmaking event and, and get information from all of you on uh, how we can make that successful. Uh, we've also got a guest speaker. We've got Jim Baker, who's CEO with Aeroscience and Technology Limited. And he's going to talk about um, what what it took and what it's been taking for him to successfully uh, work with uh, NASA over quite a few years. In fact, as long as I was at, at NASA. And, uh, and I've known Jim for a long time and he's, he's, he's gonna be a real welcome uh, uh, to kind of explain um, the do's and don'ts of trying to work with NASA. And so let me get started. If you can go to the next slide there, Alan, uh, the, goal, the goal of this segment is um, to really make matchmaking events um, in a way that they haven't been done before. And in all honesty, I've participated in many matchmaking events and we'll go through some of the details in just a minute, but I was never really that happy with the success rate of them. And so, um, uh, in talking with Alan, uh, we came up with, uh, I think, a better approach. Um, also to that, we have to collect information from all the clients um, so that when we make the matches, they end up much more effective. So let me just go over a little bit about my, um, my uh, woes of, of uh, dealing with matchmaking over the years. Um, we found that matchmaking events, they're only effective if engineers get to talk to engineers. And that's always really difficult. Um, and, and, and if you look at some of the pitfalls, and I'm not gonna go into any detail on any of these, you can, you can read those over, um, but there typically is a complete mismatch of clients' capabilities and customer needs. Typically, the way they'll do matchmaking is they'll ask who, who would like to talk to a prime? And the primes uh, come to the table. Uh, many times it's because they need to per their contract. And so we just put a lot of people together. And many times the primes are looking for certain, um, they're looking for certain skills. And the people that are matched up with them um, don't have those skills um, or uh, their skills aren't mature enough to actually work with the primes. So we wanted to avoid some of those. Um, uh, often matchmaking is done in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, that's, uh, you're, you're only able to introduce yourself and unless you're really prepped and know who you're gonna talk to, um, often um, it, that's very limiting. Um, engineers are also reluctant to attend these events, and that's who they really want to talk to. That's who the, the clients want to speak with. 
um, because that's where they're really going to make the connection. And engineers attend the events, and I've been told, and these are quotes, uh, a quote from uh, probably several of them, they go, they're matched up with people that they're not even interested in, and they feel it's just a waste of their time, so they just don't attend um, any of these events. And so typically you end up having the, the clients talking to uh, the business people. And a lot of times they're the small business liaison officers. So they're not really the business people who are dealing with those types of uh, services or products. Um, so one of the things that we have to do, and this is the first step to that, is we've got to create a matrix and we've got to have enough information so that when we send those to the primes they can go down they can look for uh, the information that that you know the skills that they're really trying to find and and decide whether or not they want to speak with someone and to that what we plan to do is take the matrix and we're going to kind of spoon feed you through the matrix so that it it it's good marketing so you have the right words in there so it will resonate with the uh with the primes and then the way we'll work it is the primes will decide who they want to talk to they get to choose and the reason that we're doing this is is be, is going back to talking to the engineers they they said if you can give me a matrix that has that's easy to get through and I can find companies that that really resonate with what I'm doing um, I will come to the matchmaking and I'll spend time to talk to them I also said all right but we have to have this thing be at least 30 minutes or there's just no way that you can really connect the engineers loved it they said if we can choose who we're going to speak to and we've got 30 minutes with them, and we'll have the engineer on the other side who can answer our questions, then it's worth our time, we will come to it. Now, as part of that, I need to have a capability list or uh, a vendor capability list of uh, two to 300 innovators um, for them to select to. I can't have 20 or 30 or we'll do it once, it'll be small, and it'll be good, but uh, we probably won't get them back again. So I've got to have a, a fairly robust uh, capability list. So the whole idea, and we're going to talk about what that capability matrix is going to look like in a minute, but we create the matrix, we get it out to the primes, they take a look at it, they choose who they want to talk to. Now, I've got one really large prime who has told me that they have, <clears throat> they've got three or four really large multi-billion dollar contracts that they're gonna start um, proposing on in the next couple of months. And they said, you get that capability list, get it to us, we will send it to the um, engineers who are on the procurements who have to find subcontractors. We'll contact them ourselves. You just give us the list. So one of the other things we'll use the list for is to just send to the um, uh, to the primes, and then they can just send it to their engineers. So it may not always be through a, a matchmaking program, but your name may get out there because they're looking for subcontractors, or they're just in general looking for some um, some capabilities. Um, at the same time, we're going to send these to all the other small businesses because one of the things that, that's really important is a lot of, on some of the smaller procurements, and I say smaller, say 50 million over a five-year period, maybe 10 million on some of the service contracts, to some of the smaller products, um, you've got the small businesses um, beating the large primes probably 50 to 70 percent of the time on some of those products but the small businesses also have to have people to partner with so we're going to make this matrix available to everyone 
who submits, um, uh, you know, submits uh, into the capability matrix. So that's how we plan to use it. We're not sure what's gonna what's gonna work better than something else. So we will just keep pinging and and hopefully in the next over the summer and certainly uh, during the July event. Um, we'll be able to make some real headway and you'll be able to make some connections. And so with that, um, can you put up the Excel? And I, uh, this is not what you'll fill out. We're putting that together and gonna have to test it over the next week. But I wanted to just give you an idea of some of the information that's gonna go in there. And I need to introduce the NASA taxonomy. And I'll do that right after I go through this. Um, basically what we're asking for and I'll just say the, tax, the NASA taxonomy now, and I'll uh, introduce it in a few minutes. Um, we're looking at um, two categories out of the taxonomy. Um, there'll be drop downs, and you'll be able to choose um, something that you do. It could be robotics, it could be propulsion. And when you put those in there, it makes it very easy for some of the NASA primes uh, to be able to find out is it something that they do and, and they know what they do. So they'll, they'll be able to grab it. At the same time, some people won't fit perfectly into that taxonomy. Uh, machine shops, reverse engineering, 3D printing, engineering projects, um, and circuit board manufacturing. Those are the prime ones. Although if there's somebody out there that feels that what they do is also um, just you just didn't cover it. Let me know. We may go ahead and just add it to the um, uh, add it to the uh, list. Um, we'll ask for client information. Um, we're going to ask for past performance uh, during the last three to five years. Um, what kind of contracts? And just with very rudimentary um, information, um, we built this type of a device for these folks. Um, also current contracts, uh, who with, and general statement on a product or service. And I'll say this now, um, there's a lot of folks who are not gonna wanna give a lot of information because they just don't wanna let everybody know that you know, they're, they're doing business with this customer and, and producing this type of product. And to that, um, I say, don't put it in if you think you're gonna lose business. Um, but at the same time, if there's a way that you can at least tell them, hey, we do this type of thing, we've done it for several different, we've had current, you know, uh, clients um, who have uh, requested this, um, just kind of generalize it because you're trying to make it so that the engineer sees those buzzwords and those keywords um, so that they're going to be interested to talk to you. Um, at the same time, uh, we've got a general overview, um, and in the general overview, we're going to say about 250 words. Put in what you did, how you did it. Don't put any proprietary stuff. Don't put any secret stuff in or anything like that, but you want just sort of a general overview um, so those buzzwords and, uh, and everything are in there. And so now, can you go over to the taxonomy, and then I'll... I'll, we'll go back to this and we'll finish up this in a minute. Okay. Um, and this is a, a very long document. And uh, let me just try to summarize it. There's 17 major categories in the NASA technology taxonomy. And what the Chief Technologist Office has done over the years, and this is the 2020 one that we're looking at here, they have um, looked at all the different aspects um, of uh, flying spacecraft, and there are a good deal. Um, yeah, and, and I'm getting something from Lori here. Uh, I apologize. All I could find was a small... <laughs> was a, um, a very small, uh, low res version of this. So when you go to it, uh, you'll be able to see it. I don't know, Alan, maybe you can make it just a little bigger. Okay, that's a little better anyway. Uh, but at any rate, um, what you've got, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, you can go down through the document, you can go back to the other thing, 
that's okay. Uh, at any rate, the first one is propulsion systems. And if you could go to that same, same thing you had up just a minute ago. Okay, there we go. So propulsion systems, there's four different aspects of that um, that they are, and they're looking for new technology in these areas. They've already doing the old technology, but they're looking for uh, any kind of new innovative uh, work or people who have a lot of experience in doing this, uh, uh, that's where the work is really gonna be. So in propulsion systems, you've got four different categories. If you read down through the document, and it's not that hard, there's a table of contents that gets you there fairly quickly. We won't go through that now. Um, find yourself in there. Um, and when you fill out the matrix, you'll put the, you know, 1.1 chemical space propulsion. You'll put that in as maybe category one and maybe um, advanced propulsion as category two. So um, that's what the taxonomy is. So you have to go through the document, find yourself, and then those are the two categories that you'll, that you'll actually put in there. So unless there's a, any questions, and we'll do that at the end, um, I want to go back to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and, and so uh, here, when we get to the general overview and the past performance and the current contracts, um, it's really important um, to put things that are going to resonate with, uh, with the primes. And so I'm gonna ask Jim Baker, but I'm gonna introduce Jim here real quick, and then we'll, we'll be moving on to his section in just a minute. Um, but let me introduce Jim Baker, because I'm gonna ask him to comment on those uh, last couple of uh, boxes. Um, Jim Baker uh, is the president and founder of Aeroscience and Technology, uh, launched in 2012. Jim has been a space systems engineer since 1989. He started his career working on the uh, International Space Station at Boeing, working on the Space Shuttle Space Lab program at Lockheed Martin, and led the Advanced Programs Group at SpaceHab, one of the early pioneers in commercial space flight. In 2012, Jim founded Aero, whose first mission was to provide technical services to human spaceflight prime contractors. In 2016, he expanded their offering to include hardware fabrication and assembly. To date, Aero has provided significant hardware components to Northrop Grumman, uh, Cygnus program, Nanorax commercial space flight systems, and Lidos hardware resupply items in support of their NASA Cargo mission uh, contract. Uh, He's located here in League City, Texas, which is probably about five or six miles from uh, NASA and Johnson Space Center here in Houston. Um, Aero's manufacturing capabilities is three, four, and five axis machining, CNC lathe capabilities, and CNC coordinate measuring machine capabilities. And so with that, um, Jim, could you, uh, um, could you just give us your, your idea on how you would fill this thing out? And you can go back to the uh, Excel. Right. So um, thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. And uh, one of the things that I, I, I think is important when you look at that taxonomy is one of the things we, we have seen or I've seen in the small business community is, um, you know, that the, some folks want to be anything you need. You know, what do you do? Well, we do anything you need. Well, that's definitely the wrong way to approach the taxonomy, you know, for for an effective approach at getting into primes. It's like, what do you do? What do you do very well? And, and we are able to identify that, I, I think, on the taxonomy. I forget, I think it's 12, 13, and 15 are, are the general areas that we, we fit in the best when it comes to the manufacturing products and services that we develop uh, here. So when you, go, when you go about doing that, well, I think what really, really gains traction when when somebody's looking at and go, oh, I want, I want to meet with Arrow, 
um, is it really, to me, it comes down to two things, Rick. One, one is, do I have the capability to do that element uh, within the taxonomy? And then um, every bit is, as important as that is the, is the past performance. And so on, on number 12, which is the structures uh, and mechanical systems part, you mentioned that we at Arrow, we've got three, four, and five axis uh, CNC capability and CNC lays. And, you know, you, you put that down as, as, as the capability portion of, of what you're trying to get them to, uh, to see that you have. But as important as that, every bit as important as that is what you, what you alluded to a minute ago, which is the past performance. You know, what have you, what have you done with that capability? Because League City, NASA Johnson Space Center, all of this is right outside of Houston, Texas. And there are hundreds of machine shops uh, that have three, four, and five axis milling capability that have CNC lays and that have uh, CMM uh, machines that they use for um, uh, validating, uh, doing dimensional inspections and things like that. But just because they have that capability doesn't mean they want to use them. Uh, you have that capability and you know how to use it for that part of the taxonomy that, that you're claiming expertise on is every bit as important to them as, as just, just having that capability because um, you've got to, you know, you got to convince them that, that you can do what they're looking for with what you have. Okay. Well, thanks, Jim. And uh, yep. can we go to the, to Jim's uh, PowerPoint page? In fact, just go to the next one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, and I was just going to point out my, if anyone has any questions, um, because I know this is pretty short to cover a lot of material, uh, I've got an email here and we can certainly set up a time to, to talk it through. Or if you have a quick question, just go ahead and email me and I'll respond back to you. And with that, uh, Jim, uh, why don't you take it away? Uh, okay, so one of the things Rick asked me to do was uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, how it is that uh, aero science and technology, you know, got going in business. And, and one of the things that, you know, you see probably and we see down here is there are a lot of small businesses that, that, um, that are coming up. They want to do business with NASA, uh, but they just never seem to get that traction and so rick asked me to uh put some thoughts together on well jim how did how did you do it and and you know what are the lessons learned that that i could share with you guys and so uh i start off you know by saying you know this is probably what you hear a lot you know is is you you, you go to the small small business uh lunch and learn the the um you know the 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 industry meetings where, where the uh, uh, small business rep for your area says, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to get registered in SAM. You got to go to those large businesses and, and meet their small business liaison and then get that capability statement, you know, crisp and concise and, and, you know, keep it current and, you know, be ready with your elevator speech if you get the opportunity. And, and we all do all those things. And, and, and and then nothing, uh, nothing happens. I uh, I I have my company capability submitted with, you know, all kinds of large businesses, and and I've never gotten an email, had the phone ring, uh, anything like that. And and so you know what I started to learn, um, well not not that it came after that, but. I had a lot of business development activities going on. This, this was a part of it, but this was not getting me any traction at all. And uh, uh, when I was at Space Hab, I was, I was in the advanced, well, let me back up. When I was in Boeing working on Space Station, I was a mid-level engineer. I didn't know where the people who were providing the, the products and services that, that we were subcontracting out, I, I didn't know where that was coming from. But later on in my career, uh, when I was heading up the advanced programs group, um, you, you quickly get from from one end of the pendulum of not knowing anybody to quickly being overrun by small businesses who want to who want an hour of your time 
and and so the the that's why these SBL small business liaison um, offices are set up at at the big companies, and it's kind of the buffer, if you will, us small businesses when we're when we're coming to them, and you know it was a real head scratcher for for quite a while as to how you know how do I crack how do I crack through how do, how do I get around the gatekeeper how do I how do I get there well. It turned out that my most successful um, business development activity was really with the people that I knew, um, and it and it and it comes down to really having a, a relationship, not with the not with the small business liaison, but with the right person. And, and, and Rick talked about the difference he wants with with his lunch and learn is to get the engineers talking to the engineers, and and as the founder of the company. I'm not a machinist that started a machine shop. I'm, I'm an engineer that provides spaceflight hardware and, and manufacturing is, is part of it. And the nice thing about um, uh, being uh, uh, older, uh, I, I guess I'll say less hair, uh, gray hair, is that my, my peers when I was working at Boeing, when I was working at Lockheed, uh, then, you know, are now um, program managers and, and, you know, lead engineers for, for groups and, and they're in the, you know, and they're, they're in the management positions at, at some of the bigger companies that I've worked on in the past. And so um, getting on, just being on that vendor list and, and hoping that the procurement organization is going to give you a shot that is, is, is such, I, there, there's probably some success stories out there that, that that's the way it worked for somebody. I don't have any of those stories at all. Um, you know, really for me, what it was, was, was me knowing uh, the guy that was in charge of, uh, in fact, the picture that I have on this graphic here is the uh, Nanorax commercial airlock, uh, which is on space station right now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I knew the guys that were involved in that and, and they knew me and, not because of any business development, but just because we know each other. And so, uh, and we have for years and, and when they knew when it was time to get some flight hardware made, that they could come to me. They've got a vendor list where if they need to go out and get, you know, three, three bids, they've got a vendor list with 50 people that could do it. And they don't, they're not going to go to all 50 people. They're, they're going to go to the three that, that they feel comfortable with. And, and so you getting in there through that relationship is, is going to be important. Uh, I know with several uh, of our large, large activities, um, we, didn't, we didn't land a big ginormous contract on day one. They were like, okay, well, let's, well, you know, let's give you this job and, and see how it goes. And, and if it goes well, um, then, you know, then I can keep, keep bringing you on for, for additional uh, activities and so you know the confidence building project uh, that they give you that that first PO um, you know that's that's going to be critical uh, that you that you do it and that you do it well uh, and then maintain basically uh, uh, having a good reputation for for being able to do what you need to do. A lot of that comes down to the fact that you know our our really our really understand the business that we're in down here with with human space flight. Um, being an engineer on the space station program, being an engineer on the shuttle program, um, you know, it's, it's it's certainly about schedules, but you know, it's it's also about understanding um, what the quality infrastructure is going to require. And um, you know, the interesting thing about that, knowing knowing what kind of acceptance data packages these guys need, there was a there was an interesting event that happened several years ago. Uh, I was on the uh, small business council here at at uh, NASA Johnson Space Center and, and Rick was the NASA rep on that. And, and he comes by and says, hey, I wanna do this manufacturing industry day so that the NASA engineers can meet, you know, the people who provide um, you know, fabrication and assembly manufacturing services. And, and uh, it was gonna be a joint NASA small business council event. And me being the small business council guy that owned a manufacturing capability, Rick says, you want to help me organize that? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you want me to help bring in all my competitors to um, convince NASA that, you know, that they need to use these guys? And I thought about it for a minute. And, 
And it, I ended up saying yes, because um, I, I knew that we know what we're doing here and, and we do it very well. And, um, and I also knew that there, there's a lot of machine shops that come to NASA that, that even though they have the three and the four and the five axis milling capabilities and CNC lays and all that other good stuff that, that ultimately that we can deliver a really quality product. So um, I, I got into a cooperative mind frame um, with, with Rick and, and with NASA. And, and, and I think that continues to be a, um, uh, an element of our products and services is that, is that we'll sit down um, and we'll, we'll help them understand, you know, Hey, what's the best way to manufacture this thing? And so maintaining that, that, that reputation of knowing what you're doing um, and having demonstrated that through the confidence building project uh, that, or initial PO or whatever it is um, that, that helps them see that, you know, what you're talking about. Uh, that, that's kind of key. Um, and then once you get your foot in the door, my, my, my next little set of slides here is, you know, keeping that fire stoked and keeping it going. And, and, and again, the confidence is, is a big thing. The other thing that we had, uh, have experienced is, um, with some of the competitors to the people that we're providing hardware to, um, not a lot of people want to be first, you know, uh, that's where you, you have to have a good relationship with the right person to say, okay, here, I think you guys can do what we're, what we need. Here's, here's your shot at it. Um, but once that snowball really kind of goes over the edge, uh, it, it can pick up some momentum. And, and I've, I've actually seen a couple of situations where people are going, oh, oh, you, you do stuff for Northrop Grumman? Um, you know, we need something very similar. Um, and you know, I, I've, I've had a much easier time uh, getting uh, sometimes that, that uh, contract with, the, with, with my customer's competitor uh, than I did initially getting it with them. And, uh, and then the other thing that we saw uh, that was very helpful was when we did do that small business, uh, that manufacturing event here at NASA JSC with Rick, um, we had a good situation here where one engineer in the crew and thermal systems division, they're the guys that do the, the space suits and the uh, environmental control systems for, for space and all that. Um, one of the guys gave me a shot, said, hey, can you make it? It was a pretty small, we were, we were responsive. We turned it around, we got it done right. And then um, he spread the word. I mean, he, he, he was our, you know, it was free marketing. He said, hey, you need he, he, the engineers over at NASA, they'll they'll sit in offices with, you know, four or six other engineers. And, you know, one guy sitting in the office going, ah, I need somebody to make this and I need it by, you know, the end of the month. And Sean pipes up, and says, hey, guys at Arrow down on Highway 96, uh, they did this thing for me and knocked it right out. And so, you know, that started spreading uh, throughout throughout the whole building. And, and uh, that you know, that, that beats anything that I could ever do in terms of advertising or, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, you can't not register in SAM and, and, and meet with those people and have your capability statement, but man, that's just, that's just not going to be the key thing that, that gets you the business. It's, it's going to be the relationships. And then the last thing I want to note here is, is you don't get to drop the ball. Uh, this is a tough gig. Uh, and um, I, I, I kind of put it in big letters at the, at the very bottom, which is it's really hard. Um, I, I should amend this a little bit. I mean, you can, you can get on the supplier list, you know, you submit your information and all that. Uh, I, 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 I should say it, it's hard to get to be one of the go-to people on that supplier list, um, but it is very, very easy uh, to get booted off there and, and they start looking for somebody else, so. Um, keep that in mind when you, when you start doing that. You, you, you've got you've to gotta perform and you've got to deliver, and, that, and that's critical. So that's the way we've done it at Arrow. Um, it's, it's, uh, it took a little while to, to really get the momentum going, but, um, man, once you, once you start getting to be known as the guys that can get the job done, um, it, it comes to you. Okay. Rick, what do you well, want to do? Um, question? I don't know. I don't know what you want to do now. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm here for questions. Well, actually, or... I was just, yeah, I was just going to say, does anyone have any questions for Jim? 
Yeah, I have a question, if I may. My name is Frank Corriego. I'm in the Wichita State University, SBDC. Um, Hi, Frank. Hello, mm -hmm. Jim and, and Richard. Thank you for, for this time for us. Um, I don't know if you know, but Wichita has a, a boatload of machine shops as well. And, and like you said, different capabilities, different machines, you know, fuselage, mainly, mainly for airplanes. Just a couple of my clients work with you, with NASA and SpaceX, but it's really manufacturing. And I, I appreciate what you said, because I came over thinking that it was innovation, innovation to work with NASA. But re this is really standard oh, okay. small businesses that, that, will, that can work with NASA then. This is not just innovation, new stuff, really teeny tiny businesses of two or three people that are creating stuff. But you're talking about established businesses in the mainstream, like machine shops. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that, that's accurate. We're, you know, we're not doing anything groundbreaking here in terms of uh, um, creating some new way of doing additive manufacturing or anything like that. I mean, you can go out and you can buy those machines. We're not we're not on the leading edge of you know some okay. super composite. So this event in July it will be for businesses that are in that space, whatever matches the tax taxonomy. Um, right, uh, Rich, that's the word. And, yeah, I think uh, I think the, the, the best way to put it is we can't limit this to just the extreme R&D innovators um, because the, the folks like Jim, they, they're the ones who actually make it work. And your large primes are looking for innovators. They're also looking for um, folks that can make products and they can work with the large primes. They know how to do it. They've got, you know, experience in it. And so it's both. So we're, so we're going to try to cover both saying, sides. And I'm sorry, I don't want to take a lot of time, but going back to no, Jim, is what you're saying, Jim, is, okay, these are normal guys that have years of experience in the, in the, in, in this elements that are uh, outlined in the, in, the, in the taxonomy and then in the matrix. So that makes it a lot simpler because we're not looking for how we're gonna commercialize, commercialize innovation, but how we're just gonna get some of our regular clients working on these things. Thank you. That, yeah, that, Frank, changes, that, I, that changes that, my view of, of what's happening here. Cause I, I came with a whole different uh, view. So this is very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, Frank, that's a good point. You know, not not everything NASA needs is R and D. Uh, that that that's that's important to you know. You look at one point one on the taxonomy, and it's uh, you know chemical propulsion or or you know something like that. Um, look at that whole taxonomy because not. So if I have guys that are already working with you with NASA or with SpaceX, are pretty good candidates to to get into into this process. Correct, yeah. They, they, you, they're just machine shops, very, very sophisticated, very, but they're just machine shops. I mean, this is this is a completely di different thing than what we do uh, at Encounter Innovation. So this is helpful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotta say, Frank, you're making me smile. This is exactly why I've been trying to bang the the, the gong trying to help people understand that you if you'll just give it a chance, you'll realize there's a great opportunity here. And the uh, much of the Midwest, we, ha we have a connection with aerospace. But beyond that aerospace, we tend to, we tend to, the, the light goes dark very quickly and haven't realized that NASA has a great opportunity if we'll plug in our best chance with what, and I'm gonna steal Jim's thunder or borrow it, is the relationship building he's talking about. It starts with Rick, because Rick's got a reputation with the primes that we do not have right now. We're gonna, use, we're gonna draft off of Rick, but our, uh, just like encountering innovation that you referred to, our highest priority will be pleasing the primes. We will make it as good as we can to where they'll be able to see a large volume, but it will be very effective. 
If somebody only wants to see five, we're not going to shove 30 through there. That's what I was talking about. When you go see some of these, uh, lunch, uh, not lunch, the matchmaking, you see people sitting here and they're going, and, and you can tell they're tired. They're like, uh, okay, who's coming next? These will be people that have said, I want to see these people. And so using Rick and then Jim the same way. The question I've got for you, Jim, is whenever, uh, when we do the matchmaking, how, how, what's a suggestion you have for our clients beyond the count, that encounter? How do they yeah. get to where they can start that relationship? So, uh, man, you're, that is exactly the right question because I've been on both sides of the table on the matchmaking. And, and, and let me tell you, when, when I, I'll just go back to when I was at Space Habit ADP uh, and we're looking for, we were the guy, I was the guy looking for subs, not, not being the sub trying to get the business. But, uh, you know, I, I'd attend one of these things. And at the end of the day, I had 15 business cards in my hand. I can't remember, you know, who's, all the capabilities were very similar because I was looking for essentially the same kind of thing. And so your relationship cannot end there. Um, you've, you've got to find a way to, to get them to your facility, to, to walk them through. Um, you know, I, one, of, one of my biggest, biggest advantages is I am 15 minutes from the front gate at NASA Johnson Space Center, closer to a lot of the other prime contractors and things like that. And, and when somebody comes walking through my facility, um, they remember what Arrow's got, where they're located, what, they, what the capacity is. Um, and, and then they've got another, you know, eight business cards that they picked up from other machine shops that want to be involved in aerospace in the Houston area. And they can't necessarily remember those guys. So you, I, I can't stress the relationship enough. And, and again, the relationship with the right people, the, the, the people that are, whose hardware is going to be in my facility. Those, those are the people that I, I need to have that relationship with. Uh, I, I, I do open just, houses. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. I was just going to say one more thing, and this is for the SBDC, and I, I don't want to make it all about us. I see their clients there are other folks in here, but uh, Alan, you, you, you said something very interesting, and I think I got to say this. You said the number one goal is to please the primes, and I think that's okay for the tech center. I think based on creating those relationships, that's okay. On the, as a consultant or as an advisor, whatever my title is nowadays, I have to, my priority is to please my client and to reach my goals for the center. So maybe this is something where we need to work as we go forward and try to work with the, with the tech center as the, as the connection with Rick and with Jim in order to please who you need to please and to please who we need to please. Because I'm going to have a hard time making that my priority. But no, no Frank, for you. So I think, we can, I think we can work together. That's all I was going to no. say. Totally agree with you. Our point is because the reason why we're here talking about this is because our number one priority with encountering innovation was to make sure that we pleased the tech scouts. We now have a reputation where we're moving forward and we're engaging our clients better and better in that same fashion. That's why we want our tech coaches or our business advisors here. And uh, we, I spoke with Craig Van Way earlier. Uh, we're going to be working with the regionals, with the Department of Commerce the same way, because there's so much opportunity with our uh, advanced manufacturing in Kansas and the surrounding states that what we're going to do is make sure that our when we have that matchmaking, that it's very effective for the primes, for the engineers. When we do that, the engineers trust that we will make this work for them. Whenever it does, then when your client gets an invitation, they need to they need to focus that this is a really good opportunity. It's not your typical matchmaking where we just shove a bunch of people in, in the same room. And I'm not I'm not taking away from that because if you can strike a good relationship, that's great. But just like Jim and Rick have both referred to, if we're going to make matchmaking work, we've got to step up to a, a better level. And where you step, where you and the other tech coaches come in is helping our clients understand how to engage when they have that opportunity. 
we'll, uh, we're going to go further with this. I know we're close to the one o'clock hour. I want to make sure that we, uh, we say a couple of things. This, what we're doing today is the beginning of this program moving forward. We're going to have uh, beyond the lunch and learn, we will have continued capability statement uh, prep. We will have uh, the documents that you've got to have whenever you're in front of them. We'll have more training with this. Uh, Jim, I, I would love to have you back if you're willing to. One of the questions I've gotten, I know as we run close, I wanna close the, the reporting and we can continue to talk if you want. But one of my questions is, uh, as knowing some of the machine shops here in, in the Wichita area and having had some clients, they don't always do all the work themselves because they can't, they, they have time where the work, it, be, it goes beyond their own scope. Uh, are you, do you have that same experience? And then if so, would you be willing to be looking at our client base as well? Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've got the same situation here. I don't, I don't do everything across the manufacturing spectrum. A spectrum. Uh, I don't have EDM capability here, so I have to sub that out. Uh, and a lot of my clients want a, a turnkey product, whether, uh, and a lot of times that means it, it can be a, uh, an item that we manufacture, we send it out for anodize or allodyne or, you know, chem, uh, chem film. Uh, we install helicoils and then, you know, it's, it's, and then we hand them back the, the fully compliant part. It's, it's not just hogging out a piece of an aluminum into a, into a shape that they want. It can go beyond that. And so, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a provider of, of not, not just machine metal parts, uh, but solutions, that's, that's what, that's what we do. And that's what they trust us for that, that, that we take care of it and all that good stuff. So yeah, having, having subs and having that, that, uh, that ecosystem, if you will, uh, to get the full part done the whole way you need it. That's, that's important. Excellent. Well, that's exciting because I think then as we, uh, uh, as we do a, an outreach and try to get more of, our, of the specific clients back in, the, in a conversation like this, I would love to have, have the meet and greet in the same way to where we can exercise some of those uh, encounters, how they need to be whenever they're meeting with folks like you or whoever it is, the primes. Alan. Um, yes. I'm wondering if I can get some clarification here. I mean, when I'm listening to Jim and Richard, there it, it appears to me that they're referring to extremely uh, solid existing manufacturing capability for technology that while it is amazing technology, it is a, it is um, it has been established. So would I be correct in um, uh, stating that there's, there, there's two different kind of avenues that, or, or there's probably more, but avenues that these primes need to be approached on. So um, these are solid, this is solid manufacturing capabilities and that's, it's like, it's amazing. But what about the technology transfer of cutting edge trans, um, technology, technology that, you know, the, the uh, inventor just can't wait to get into the hands of the warfighter. What about the new stuff um, that, that, you know, we need to get on top of for our uh, near peer, you know, in, in the eventuality of, of um, you know, uh, conflict with near peer at, at adversaries that are, you know, that we, we need to grab hold of now. That appears to me that that would be a separate avenue um, is yeah, that Michael, correct? I mean, it doesn't seem to me that the same people would handle both. And, and, and you're right. It is a different avenue, and it's a different set of folks. And, and at uh, um, NASA, um, it really goes into the chief technologist office. And we're beginning to make some, having some discussions. I'm having it sort of the lower level folks that I've known um, uh, for a long time. And so we're, we're getting ready to, to have some of those discussions with them. Um, that's hey, Rick, this the is Jim. Can I say something? Go ahead. Hey, 
uh, yeah, you're, you're you're right about that. But uh, the 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 key thing I want to point out to Michael is that is that while the approach may be, um, or I should say, while while the uh, arena is a little different, you know, established manufacturing versus cutting edge technology, the the process is still the same. I mean, there's a lot, just like there's a lot of machine shops out there. There's there's also you know a lot of technologies being developed for. Uh, you know, that, that us innovators out there, and, and we do, we do some R and D type things here as well. We don't, you know, manufacturing parts is not our only gig. Uh, but it's, it's very similar. You got to find out who the right guy is that's going to be interested in your technology and, and, and strike up that relationship. And, and if you meet them at a lunch and learn because they've matched up your, your taxonomy, great, but you got to go beyond that. You got to continue the relationship. You got to tell them, you got to show them, show them what it is that that you have that is similar to what they need and how they can get that and i i will say we i've seen uh, an issue in the past where um you know i've one of my guys uh, that i used to work with he was he was good at this he would have a great idea and he just couldn't understand why no, nobody could get behind it uh well it wasn't what they were looking for and so you got to make sure that you're you're finding that right guy but michael i would say that the 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 approach is the same, even though your arena is a little different. Uh, so I, I wanna... Sorry about that, Alan. Can, I was just gonna say NASA iTech is the program that um, ties directly to innovation in tech and it's um, operated out of NASA headquarters. We had Kira Blackwell on one of our lunch and learns, but, but she recently left um, she's working on a different NASA program, but if you look up NASA iTech, I think they're creating it, although they might have changed the name of it. And um, again, I was connected to the last uh, program that was led by a different individual, and um, they transitioned out fairly recently. So Google NASA iTech and um, see who that is would be my suggestion for your stuff, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, so there's, there's, a, there's a couple of avenues to, to your question, Michael, and to what Laurie's talking about. One of the other ways that we've looked at this is uh, through the, uh, Rick, I'm going to, I hope I'm saying it right, the joint counseling sessions. Uh, yes, because, yeah, that's correct. Because, uh, Michael, we I asked that very question. I said, do we, so, uh, so this kind of goes, this kind of ties back into what Frank said earlier. So helping everyone understand what we're about to do is the beginning of an ongoing program. This is not a one-time conference that we just hope goes well. Uh, we intend for Rick, and so just being totally transparent, we intend and hope that Rick continues to work with us for several years, not just during this COVID CARES Act funding opportunity for us. And one of the deliverables is the joint, the monthly joint counseling sessions. These were what he was doing before that he was batting a thousand on where everyone's getting contracts. One of the things I asked was, can, can we present a client that is innovation, but does not have a history of manufacturing? Are they still a desirable solution? And, he, and Rick says, yes, absolutely. So you're right, we're, what we're focusing on right now in the matchmaking is, is much more advanced manufacturing or, or uh, established manufacturing, which is where the epiphany or the, the light bulb goes off on Frank going, this is not what I was thinking. And I'm glad he caught that because that was exactly what we were hoping for. But at the same time, once we establish a reputation, we're drafting off Rick right now, but once we establish a reputation with the primes, then we then the joint counseling sessions start to kick in. And then as they see that we're bringing clients to them, solutions to them, we get the joint, we get the primes to set down. And uh, whenever Rick presents two clients a month, what, what happens is 12 to 15 primes are sitting in the council to look at that. And so we will be able to weave the innovation back into this uh, as well. Rick, is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. Yep. Cool. So I, I hope you, I think it was a great question. It, it ties both the innovation side of this as well as the manufacturing. 
you may be the guy that's going to bring an innovation and you may bring the manufacturing with it, or you may have the innovation and you're struggling for how to ramp this up for manufacturing. And so we may find and connect two of you together in order for that solution to be what the prime needs. Does that make sense? Yes, it absolutely does to me. Cool. Cool. I know we're in overtime, so uh, we're now into the, what I'm going to say, the, the formal, informal, uh, is where we can network. So I would love to have everybody be able to speak up, give us an idea what you're thinking, uh, and uh, give a big, uh, a big round of applause to Jim uh, for being our, uh, our poster child for the day. Jim, I'm so glad you were able to join us. This is what we hope to do with each of these as we go forward is that we bring a real life success story or an ongoing shaggy dog story uh, to the event to where people can understand what the possibilities are. Thanks for having me, Alan. And uh, I'm always happy to answer any questions if anybody wants to reach out. Cool. Well, I'm leaving. I'm opening it up to everyone, whoever would like to speak. I know we. I see folks from Texas, uh, and I noticed some from several yeah, uh, uh, Oklahoma, uh, as well here. as uh, Justin. Yes, yes. Uh, Justin uh, Pippins here from Springfield, Missouri. Very um, good. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, lo I love what I'm hearing. Uh, I love what's going on. I attended one of your lunch and learns. I'm not sure if it was last Friday or two Fridays ago, but very informative. I love the ecosystem building that you're trying to do. It sounds like you're really trying to break things down of what you have coming. So uh, great presentation today, and I will be back. Good. Thanks, Justin.